Morning folks, welcome along to the freaking channel on a Tuesday. So the plan is today to continue where we left off with the concrete in on the dray run, which means I have to set that up. So that's the first mix out of the mixing machine and Jack's just pulled all this section out here so we should be low enough now because what I want to do is lay all these quarry tiles in the gap A saving on cement and B using up all the quarry tiles and then we're going to take it all the way to that back door section there so all of this is going to be solid paving. we go with that so what we're gonna wait for is for this to set up a little bit we're going to start on that end now and then uh, we'll come back here and we'll put this ramp in we've been grafting away dropped a few mixers down and laid a few slabs and this is how far we've got so this little section here is ready for concrete ballast to be poured over the top to fill in the gaps maybe not over the top but in the gaps and then down here we've gone with all these quarry tiles we just laid them down as best we can no rhyme no reason to them really and then you'll remember when we were digging the drain out in the cellar and we, this was the old drain cover that we replaced for one of those well it makes a nice threshold really doesn't it so we've stuck that in so all of this lot now just going to have a little bit of time to cure and then we're going to come in and we're going to shovel ballast in the gaps and point it point it all up and make it nice and tidy i'll tell you what i forgot on yesterday's update folks to show you exactly how we'd finished this clean zone off so Look at what a little bit of silicon can do. It's made it absolutely seamless. I'm really uh, pleased with how it's turned out and I think any EHO individual coming out here will say A OK for brewing on here. Should be spot on for weighing out hops, yeast, anything else that I need to um, keep sanitary. But not today of course, because today well, we're covered in cement dust and all sorts. So what I've managed to do is throw the remainder of the concrete mix down here to make a little bit of a pad. It's not finished, but I'm going to come back to this and lay another layer with some shutter in. So we've got a nice solid pad to put the bin on and any other uh, empties. And then all this section here is now filled in 
and Jack's just doing the last little bit of the pointing in between the quarry tiles. I mean, it ain't no oil painting, but it's going to be functional. And when this concrete goes off, because we've done a good strong mix, it should be hard as a coffin nail. So we shouldn't have any problems with it cracking or splitting. But it might crack when it dries. I can't rule that out. I can't rule that out. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, well, clean the car because we've got some splashes of cement on the car. Clean the cement mixer out because it's a brand new piece of kit. And then we're gonna pack everything away because I'm getting too old for this shit. I can, uh, oh, it's done my back in that has. I'm glad I'm not in building trade anymore. So let's clean that mixer out. First time I've cleaned a car in years. Well, half of one. Well, I kind of couldn't help myself. I cleaned the whole goddamn thing. I'm sure I spoke about this on the other vlog, but uh, maybe I didn't. So, that car, 400 quid. Um, there's a chap who drinks in the pub regularly, often. Uh, called Craig and he's moving to um, Gibraltar Don't think it's down to Brexit, but I wouldn't blame him if it was well mind you there'd be no point would there anyway, so uh, he's off offloading all of his um, Assets, you know everything he owns so he can go scot-free and live over there So I said I'll buy it off you you know how difficult it is for me in the morning not having a run around to get to work because obviously I've got to either wait for Gemma to drop the kids off and we come in and share a car or I have to walk down and uh, well, it's, it's a pain in the arse quite frankly I see it as a waste of time even though last year I was kind of running down at this time of year uh, well the fitness has vanished somewhat so uh, yeah bought the car off him thought wouldn't it be nice if uh, I cleaned it so when I get home the kids will think oh look he's got a really nice brand new car and they'll all want to jump in it and have a ride to McDonald's so the way I've used cars in the past is uh, if I've picked up a cheap motor like this generally I just kind of run them into the ground once they're no good or not worth fixing uh, we'll just sell them to the scrap man. It's as simple as that. But this motor looks like it's got a few miles left in it. 140 thou on the clock. But I'm no freaking expert. Oh, and it's a Hyundai i30. If anybody's curious, it says uh, CRDI on the side. Critty. <laughs> so as promised yesterday. Uh, only a day delayed. I'm going to take you next door now and we're going to try the New England IPA. If you want to know why we didn't try it yesterday, I have the evidence. So, when you put casks on the auto tilts, there are two prongs there to stop the, the cask sliding off the auto tilts. So, if you're flipping it on on your own, you're meant to turn the cask upside down. Somebody had an accident yesterday. So the prong went into the cask and somebody got covered in beer. So, a whole cask of New England IPA down the drain. That's right, that's 40 litres of the New England IPA down the drain. Kind of makes me hope that it tastes awful anyway. <laughs> then we can get it doesn't cost us anything. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, but yeah. He's put another one on the stillage. Racked and tapped, not cleared yet. Remember, there's no finings in this beer. So let's go next door and have a look and a little taste and see what we've got. Hello. Hey, up, 
tripod. You cleaning lines? No, I'm cleaning. Uh, well, yeah. Physical cleaning the lines. Oh, the outside. Yeah. Yeah, I've come in to do the taste test for the uh, for YouTube for the New England IPA. All right, it's lovely. Yeah. So I'm going to pull it out the cask and see what we've got. Smells clean in here, man. Looking good. Uh, doing a full line cut tomorrow as well. Oh, three beers. Time to finish them. Uh, about four o'clock ish. I was going to do it before pub opens. Time you open pub. Open the pub, so we've got two till. Yeah, we'll, we'll play it by ear. You gotta love a bit of line cleaning. Gotta love it. Anyway, small brief digression there, but we've come in here, once I've got this camera set, to try this New England IPA, which is down here on the stillage so let's go down and have a look at her right so it's been on the stillage for a day or so uh, but it's only been tapped today so the chances are it's still going to be a bit hazy so let's get a bit well it should be hazy if it's a new england ipa It certainly is hazy. So first impressions, looks like orange juice. Oddly enough it smells like orange juice, which is a good thing. It's got the aroma. I've had fruitier New England IPAs on the nose, but it is there. And yes, that bitterness is definitely too much it's overly bitter so what's happened is putting the hops into the whirlpool I've added far too much in terms of IBU so we need to reflect on that recipe moving forwards and at the very least half the amount of hops that go into the whirlpool and just move them across to the dry hop it wouldn't be an issue and then that would leave some residual sweetness uh, balanced against the bitterness to give you that fruity IPA, New England IPA uh, kick. Whereas this, whilst not offensive, is too bitter. It's about as bitter as the Guile 1 that we made. It's very reminiscent and extremely grapefruit pith. You could get grapefruit pith on it. Another day, another dollar spent. Oh, oh my God. Right, I'm gonna get my jacket on, wherever I've put it. <laughs> Here it is, folks. I've been sporting the old Idle Valley Brewery logo all freaking day, because I had that dirty old uh, hoodie on. Didn't want to get this one dirty. You never know, you might even see something like this uh, available on the website soon because we've just received the second uh, box full of hats from the embroiders so we can finally get all of these orders out so last time I ordered 50 hats sold all 50 they went in a flash like a couple of days so I've got another 30 everyone's parcels are around there and they're packaged up in the boxes the reason they're in boxes and not bags is because the company I'm shipping with insist that uh, they are in boxes with one solid side because a lot of this stuff is going overseas. We've had orders from Canada, the States, Africa, Estonia, Norway, New Zealand, Australia. It's crazy. Pretty much anywhere where you can brew beer, they've bought a freaking hat. It's ace. So I have to affix a customs label to them all. 
If I'd have known it was this much work, I might have put a couple of quid on it for my time, but just for you folks, I don't mind. So tomorrow we're going to get the last of those hats packaged up and see if we can't arrange a delivery for the courier to come and collect them all and they will be with you probably within the next week if you're in the UK, maybe a bit longer if you're elsewhere. So we're just waiting for Jackie boy to finish up on that last bit of uh, cementing and then wash his trowel. <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny. Uh, and then, yeah, we're going to shoot off home. So we'll catch you on tomorrow's vlog where we will be doing something different to laying cement. I don't know what it's going to be yet, though. We'll see you then.